Well, we've got the tail end of a train going by right now. I am set up here in front of the house. I'm not too far out in the street, but I want to be cognizant of whether there's any traffic coming. People fly around that corner. All right, so what are we doing here? Well, I started creating these training programs for my employees as I grow my company from zero to $100,000 a year. I decided I may as well share the knowledge with you as well here for free. If you want to skip ahead of the line, I would invite you to take the best real estate photography business course I've ever seen. It's called Real Estate Photography Pro. It was created by Eli Jones. He's years ahead of me in his business, and he has put together the most complete business course and community. You can find a link for more information on the course in the video description. And if you join, I'll see you in the private Facebook group. Of course, if you're not in a hurry and you want to keep learning for free, just tap that. I think it's on this side. Just tap that subscribe button and keep watching here. Now let's get back into the edit. Great, we're doing good so far. The last room I really want to talk to you about is the kitchen and we'll probably do the bathroom. Um, all the other rooms are basically just four square walls, empty rooms, nothing of interest to see in there. But with the kitchen, you've got some definite items that are going to be of interest to a potential buyer. So the sink is always an item of interest and the stove is always an item of interest, especially when they're really nice. This sink actually is a very interesting sink because it's an old farmhouse sink and you can't really find these anymore. The stove, not so interesting. So we'll get a shot of it anyway. Um, there's also a big hole in the wall over here where I'm guessing a small refrigerator used to go, or maybe a dishwasher, but nothing there anymore. I don't see where else they would have put a refrigerator in here, but um, we're, we're gonna end up catching a part of that hole. That's okay. Like I said, we don't wanna misrepresent the home, but we also don't want to uh, make that hole the main focal point of our photo so we're just going to catch the edges of it we'll take a photo this way we'll take a photo over this way and i'm going to get one that is square on in the center of the sink now looking at this one of the things that i noticed is that the sink plugs are up on top of the sink which is very common you might not notice it normally because you're used to having your plugs there but we don't want those in the pictures, so I'll either place them back down into the drain where they belong, or I'll place them underneath in the cupboard where you can't see them at all. Now another thing to think about when we're talking about this hole over here where potentially the dishwasher or small refrigerator goes is that the agent could potentially ask you to stage that with a dishwasher so that they could see how it would look with the dishwasher in place. I know my agent and he won't ask me to do that on this house, but if you don't know your agent very well, or if your agent is somebody who likes to use the digital manipulations, then that would be something to consider. You might wanna get a good shot of that area just so you can see how it looks filled. Instead, I'm gonna take a shot of it from way over in the corner over there. And then when I shoot from this corner, I'm gonna aim the camera towards the edge of the sink so we don't get a lot of that hole in there. And I'll show you examples of those in the edit. All right, so I wanna get this single, uh, get my hand out of the shot. I wanna get this single point on the sink, which is going to be square on like this. And if we look here, we can see that at the top it is not perfectly level, even if we have a green line there. So if I angle this to where it's level, now the sides aren't level. What that tells me is I'm not perfectly centered on this sink. I need to move the camera over a little bit and then redial in my shot, make sure everything is level, make sure that I am on the proper horizon now right here, 
it looks like it's perfectly straight across the top but I am not centered on the sink. So I'm gonna move a little bit more to the right until that line is centered and everything is straight. And then I will focus, I usually focus on the faucet and then shoot. And I will do the same thing for the stove. Over here, I'll set up straight across get as close to that sink as I possibly can, square myself on the stove, level it, and then take the shot. So for the bedrooms, if it's not a primary bedroom, you don't really need to take four shots of it, especially when it's completely empty like this. So I'll generally take a shot from inside the doorway, like this one. As you can see, I've framed those windows up and I've caught the edge of this door over here. And then I'll move to the opposite corner and find my most interesting shot in here. Either the doorway and the window or the doorway and the wall. Which would you pick? I'm going to pick the doorway and the window because the window is much more interesting than a blank wall. So I've just got two shots inside the bedrooms. And there's this little spare room over here. I wouldn't even call it a flex space. I would probably turn it into a closet. There happens to be a brick in the corner. I don't know what that's there for, but I'm just gonna get one shot from inside here and I'm gonna show that door and the window. All right, we made our way back into the bathroom. Uh, this is not the most extravagant bathroom, but it's still important to get photos of it. We wanna definitely show the shower over tub combination over here and the vanity and mirror over here. What we don't necessarily wanna showcase is the toilet. It can be in the shot, but it doesn't need to be like its own shot unless it's Elvis Presley's gold toilet. We don't really want to see it. We know there's a toilet in the bathroom, but if we catch the edge of it in a shot, that's fine. But don't make it like the center of your photo. All right, I backed off about as far outside the door as I can get without getting the door in the shot and without getting the door frame in the shot. So that really lets me see the shower over tub. Now we can see the toilet over here in the corner, but like I said, it's not the centerpiece of the bathroom. And the only reason I shot that far out anyway is because if I come in any further, you can no longer see the shower head. So I'm gonna bring that back out. If I go out too far, I'll get the door and the frame. So I just wanna make sure I can see like the shower rod going across the top got a nice spot to focus there and I'll take that shot also shooting the vanities are a challenge because they're small they're cramped in up against the wall and they've got a mirror so one thing that you could do is you could set up straight across from the vanity I'm gonna kind of balance over the toilet here straight across from the vanity and then lower your camera angle enough that you can't see yourself in the mirror, which is on this tripod, a simple matter of twisting this and bringing the camera down. Or you could shoot it from an angle where you can't see yourself in the mirror. Whichever is going to make the picture most interesting and allow you to get a, as far away as you can. Now I'm looking at this shot from over here and even all the way back here where I get some of that shower in there, I think would be okay. So I'm actually gonna take the shot from all the way over here so that we can see the entire vanity, mirror, and window. All right, so we're finished with the inside of the house. I'm just gonna go through, make sure that all of the lights are off. I wanna get 25 photos for this shoot. 
I have 69 pictures on my camera and because I'm shooting in brackets of three, that means I've taken 23 photos so far. That's just the interior of the house. We have to get exteriors still. So that's easily gonna put us over that 25 mark. I don't mind delivering a few extra photos to an agent. So we'll turn off all the lights, lock up the house, and then make sure that we get those exterior shots. All right, we're now ready to shoot the exterior of the house. We're in the backyard. It's actually cooler outside this house than it is inside today. So it's nice to be out here. And I'm going to show you a couple of shots just to capture the exterior of the house. We usually do six, one from each corner, one from directly in back, and one from directly in front. And then if we do drone shots, we do those same shots, but at higher elevations. I wanted to mention too, that when I took the key out of the key box, I always put it, I unlock the door and then I put the key in my back pocket here so I don't accidentally lock myself out of the house or leave the keys inside of the house when I lock up. I've always got the keys right there next to my lens cap so I always know where everything's at. So the process is basically the same when we're doing the exterior photos. We want to make sure that everything is level. We want to make sure that we've got the whole home inside of our frame and then we want to make sure that we have a good frame i don't think i like this branch blocking the corner of the house there so let's see if we can move forward a little bit get rid of that branch maintain the entire house in the frame Make sure everything's level, I am centered, and we'll take the shot. Now we would also do the corners, which is basically one edge this way, catching down the side of the house. Do that from each corner, and you also want to get a view of what can be seen from the house. So you want to see the whole backyard. Come over here to a nice corner where we can line up the backyard. I notice there's a vehicle over here. So I want to kind of hide him behind the bushes. I don't like having vehicles in my shot. So I would hide him, line it up and take the shot. Here in front of the house, the process is going to be exactly the same. We've got a couple of things that we're going to have to deal with. One thing is that the road is very close to the house so if you don't want to get the road in your shot you're gonna to have to be like 10 feet out in the road make sure that you're safe from both directions this is a one-way street so the vehicles would only be coming from one direction but line the grass up on the bottom edge of your shot and take the picture so that it looks like there's a nice grassy edge before the sidewalk the other thing that you, we are going to have to deal with is the fact that the agent has already planted their sign and their sign is not supposed to be in the MLS. So we're either going to have to figure out a way that we could shoot around that sign or we're going to have to Photoshop it out. So that's something we'll deal with back in the studio. Well, we've got the tail end of a train going by right now. I am set up here in front of the house. I'm not too far out in the street, but I want to be cognizant of whether there's any traffic coming. People fly around that corner. So you can see I'm just far back enough that I've got the roof line in there. I can rotate the edges to where I can just see the grass. But if you see, I am angled very high if I bring it down, it's going to be all road and we lose that roof line. 
if I bring it back up it's just on the edge of the grass and we've got the roof line but our verticals are going to be way off I'm also dealing with the real estate sign by being directly in front of it so all I can see is the post and that's going to be much easier to deal with in Photoshop we're going to have to Photoshop this anyway so I'll fix those verticals the only thing I'm concerned about is losing that roof line I'm actually going to come back a little bit further so I can get more of that roof line in the shot so that we don't lose it when we get into Photoshop and straighten those verticals so I'll take that shot I changed my battery and with the Nikon once you change your battery it changes it from timer to single shot again gets me every time line up my shot take the shot and get the heck out of the road before a car comes so for this oblique shot I'm having a similar problem getting that roof line in because this house is so tall it's just difficult to get far enough away to where we can get everything in the shot and that's why I have to be angled up so high Another thing that I notice is that there's a broom leaning against the house right here. It would be easy enough to Photoshop it out, but it's even easier to just go up there, remove the broom from the shot. So we'll take that. and one from the other corner. Now a tilt shift lens would keep us from having these extreme angles. I do not have a tilt shift lens. I've always fixed it in post. I'm interested in getting a tilt shift lens. Once I get one, I will let you know how that goes. This basically completes this photo shoot. So the next thing we will have to do is go to the studio and edit these photos. This is my workspace when I'm out of the office. You'll see that I have a bottle of water here. It's very important to always take water with you. I carry steel-toed work boots in case I'm on a construction site or some other muddy place or if I have to plant posts for the real estate agent and I keep all my gear here ready to go sometimes there's things that I need if we're going to shoot video I've got the Atomus here um, if we're going to do audio I've got a couple of lav mics in there so I've got some extra lenses in here just to make sure that everything is prepared and of course I have my lens cleaner that I try to use before every shoot so we'll put this away, we will go back to the studio, and then we'll do the full edit. 